What's up, Basil, babes? It's your girl, Joy. I'm back. I was gonna tell you something, but I forgot. It was good, too. Oh, listen, listen. So, these kids love when I tell stories, right? And they know a story is coming. I'll be like, let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. They be like, yeah, story time. <laughs> I know they think I'm the craziest teacher on the planet. I am, but don't tell nobody. Okay, nobody needs to know that. So, I was telling the story. It tied into the lesson. It tied into perseverance. I don't know what we were doing. This was yesterday and I forgot. But I was, you know, connecting the story. And then I, I like to share bits and pieces of my own personal story. And I was telling them, I think we were writing truisms or something like that. I don't remember. And then I told them a little bit of my story, how I looked down one day. I was going through a really rough patch in my life, although there have been a ton of rough patches. <laughs> Pretty much all my life there's been a rough patch. But anyway, this particular rough patch, um, I went through like a homeless spell. And I looked down at my shoes. I didn't realize. And some of you have seen these shoes, but for those of you who haven't, and I looked down at my shoes and I did not realize how bad my shoes were. I wore, and then when I tell people, until you walk a mile in my shoes or put yourself in my shoes, everybody has a story. Everybody's story is different. You know, everyone may have a more um, harder hardship. Does that make sense? I don't even know if that's done right. So, you know, everybody goes through difficult times. Somebody ha may have more difficult time than another. But for me, my hardship was mine. And it was hard. And it's still hard. But, you know, it's mine. So when I tell people, don't judge me until you've walked a mile in my shoes. Until you can put yourself in my shoes. Until you can live my life. And my upbringing. My family. Because it all shapes and molds you. It molds you into who you are. So, let me show you my shoes. Some of you have seen it, maybe y'all forgot, so just pretend like you're hearing it for the first time, if you remember. So, the rough patch, as I was saying, the rough patch was so bad, y'all. Listen, listen. I did not realize I wore those shoes down. And one day, I looked down, and I was like, whoa, oh my God. I did not realize how bad my shoes were. So, I put the shoes in a shadow box. They've been in a in a um, shadow box, which is like a frame, for several years now. And some people ask me, why do you still have those shoes? I said, because I never ever want to forget where I came from. Am I much further than those pair of shoes? A little bit, but not much. I'm still on my struggle bus, but I'm not where I was. Even the financials, I ain't dying, change, no, no, right? But you know, even that mental, that strength, the struggle, the survival, the determination, the perseverance, the not giving up, the fight, the, your willpower, your goals, your dreams, I didn't give up. And it was a struggle being a single mom with three kids. No help from the dad. In the beginning I had help, but then that stopped. But it was hard raising those kids by myself. Lots of sacrifice, a lot of stuff. And then sometimes kids don't even appreciate that. You know what I'm saying? Anyway, I'm not even gonna get on that. But let me just show you, cause we wanna keep it positive, okay? Because I want this to represent that even if you're going through a hard time now, it's not always gonna be hard. I mean, it's still hard, but it's not as hard as it was back then. You know what I'm saying? It's still hard. So even though I was down here, I might be right here. But still, I'm not down here. I'm up here, but it still is not as bad as it was. Let me show you the shoes. <laughs> Don't worry about my, so these are the shoes. Don't worry about the dust on the shoes. <laughs> so I don't know what you can see. These are holes for how I wore through the material on the shoes. They're sh tattered and stuff. And 
I don't know. And I just, I just keep the shoes because I never want to forget. I never want to forget where I came from, what I had to overcome, what I had to survive, what I had to endure. Um, trying to keep my head above water, keep my kids. Um, so at that time too, I didn't want my kids to know how bad things were. So, um, you know, I did the best I, I could to shield them from a lot. They couldn't get as much as other people, but honey, when Christmas time came on, uh, we went to the firehouse. We got gifts from the firehouse. I got gifts um, various places. Uh, I would get gifts and they would have a ton. It was a ton of junk, but they always had Christmas. And every year, I don't know how I did it. I really don't. Christmas is the most stressful time for me. It's just stressful because, you know, my kids get older, although I don't buy some, I may give them a hundred, hundred and fifty dollars, like, and that's all I got. And that's still, and you know, and I'm robbing Peter to pay Paul just so they can still have something. Some of you may not do that and that's okay. You, you're you going to do what you can or can't for your family. But I still always wanted my kids to have something for Christmas. And so I found a way every year, even if it put me in a hole or if something was late or I had to make a little arrangement, I made sure they had something. And or if I had to ask companies, I remember the firehouse when you, I, I think I did the firehouse two years in a row. You give them the age of your children. And at that time it could have been like seven, eight and nine, you know, cause my, I have stair steps. And there would be basketball, games, dolls, da da da, and they give you bags, big tr trash bags full of stuff, and would wrap that stuff, a little bit of stuff. And I think another one, one year I went to um, domestic violence place for women who have survived domestic violence. I got gifts there, so I always found the way. But looking down at my shoes and during those tumultuous years, I had these shoes on. Mm -hmm. These were my go-to shoes. Just slip them on. Whether we were, I, then we moved to Michigan for a year. The, my little car stopped working. I had to get the kids to school. I would drive them to school. I was like, well, kids, we're gonna walk. And we walked several miles. But I made sure I got those kids to school because the bus, the bus wasn't coming. So we walked, we walked all the way to school, and then I walked all the way back home, and then I would take the bus to go get them and bring them back. And see, the kids don't. It sometimes it's just hurtful. They don't realize all the stuff I did. And at that time, never turned my back on my kids. Was always there. And I don't think they realize or appreciate that. They probably don't even remember. But I remember these shoes remember so you know even though you know I might feel a certain way I know and I'm okay with all the sacrifice I make so like even if somebody's mad at mom or not talking to mom I'm like that's on you I know I've been there since day one since conception so I'm okay with whatever because I know what I put in you know, so yeah, I probably know who I'm talking about. But the kids, I don't think they realize the sacrifices that we make as parents. The parents who are active and who are involved, who are in the trenches every day. I don't think they realize. They don't realize it. They really don't. And then another, somebody else was telling me about their child. How the child doesn't speak to them. It's just... But who's been there for them since day one? Who's made the sacrifices? Who's done so much, given so much for a child to just like, oh well, mm -mm. That, it hurts my heart for me. It hurts my heart for other parents. It's just, it's just, it's hard. And I know I've said this before y'all, so just bear with me. I never in a million years thought that I would raise kids by myself. Never thought that. I did the best I could. Did I do everything right? No, but I did the best I could. So anyway, keep your head up if you're going through it with your children, if their children watching. You guys gotta stop and think outside of yourself about the sacrifices parents have made 
Some of me, not many, but you're here. <laughs> no matter how you're here, you're here, you got a roof over your head. Some of you may not have a roof over your head, but it is what it is. Some kids, you can't tell them nothing. They want to do things your way. But when you're in your parents' house, it's still their rules and their expectations. You got to do, you got to come to a compromise. You got to do what your parents want you to do until you're grown enough to do you. Until then, okay, yes, ma'am. No, ma'am. You need me to take the trip? No, no problem. You need me to do No problem. You know, I know y'all didn't ask to be here, but you are. And you need to be appreciative. And I know I'm appreciative because the way things went down with my mama, I'm surprised I'm here. For real, for real. Seriously. The way things went down with her, it could have went the other way. So, even though I'm not where I want to be in life, I know that um, hopefully that I've touched the lives of others, even if it's just two or three, and that I can spread my joy wherever I go. I know that I was here for a purpose. Maybe not what I planned for my life or envisioned for my life, but it is what it is. I gotta find something to be thankful for. I do love my name though, it's cute. It's cute, you see me, you in my business. Don't do that, don't do that. <laughs> All right, y'all, look at my shoes. They're just, oh, the memories, the memories, the memories of these shoes. Oh, the stories they can tell. Bye, y'all.